psychologist, Dr. Mara Carpell of Dr. Mara Carpell and Your Golden Years. I hope you enjoy this informative interview and many more to come on my program. And joining me right here in the studio is Roland Kemakai, president of Global Empowerment Institute and author of the book, Sonuma. And Roland is here to talk about a little bit about his life and about <laughs> overcoming adversity. Welcome. Oh, thank you, thank you, Mara, for having me. I'm definitely happy to be here with you on this beautiful Sunday evening yes, afternoon. Yes, beautiful. Yeah. Well, so, so, Roland, why don't you fill our listeners in on a little bit about your history. Of course, it's a pretty extensive history, and yes. people can read this book and To get they, the details. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you can give the quick version of it. Absolutely. So I am Roland Kemokai originally born in Liberia, West Africa, some 37 years ago. <laughs> uh, when I was born, originally my biological parents placed me in a cardboard box, threw me away on a community dump pile and ran off. Mm. Now an older lady walking by this dump site heard some noises from the top of the trash heap and at a moment she thought it was a cat. Mm -hmm. But then it sounded like a human baby from the screams. So she put down her cane and climbed on top of the trash pile, pried the box open, and there's a baby in there covered in fire ants screaming. And that was you. That's me. So she scooped me up, ran to the police station screaming. So because all the houses are closed, the entire neighborhood came out and ran to the station. They couldn't find my parents after all the investigation. So she decided to adopt me and took me home. Uh, when I was about eight years old, she left the country and came to America for a knee surgery. Now she couldn't go back because a civil war started in Liberia. While she was, while she was still here yeah. in America. Mm -hmm. So I had to then stay with my father, adoptive father. And when I was about 11 years old, he was murdered during the war. So before even my mother traveled and was staying with the whole family, I experienced a lot of physical, emotional, sexual and psychological abuses and physical abuses, of course. So those then, when my father was murdered, I began struggling very deeply emotionally mm -hmm. uh, on so many levels that even before my 16th birthday, I had attempted suicide three times wow. and also I almost became a child soldier during the Civil War. Many times I did some night recruitment, went on the drill sometime, learned how to well use AK-47. Mm -hmm. The only thing that really kept me from fully joining was the threat of my father, even though he had been gone, but I always heard his threat in my head. He called me Abu. And so he said, the day you pick up a gun to fight as a child soldier, I would tear up your behind. <laughs> so that saved my life. And so then, so throughout surviving the war, I became, one group that helped me is that I joined the Liberian Boy Scouts Association. Mm. So through my wow. scout master, I learned a lot of skills of self-reliance. Uh, depending on myself, respect, mm -hmm. uh, loyalty, which is pretty much the scout laws. Right. Living them helped me to define a new part of myself. Mm -hmm. Leadership, self-leadership. One of what I used to always love when the scout master would say, he said, a boy scout must be self-reliant. Mm -hmm. At first I didn't understand those words, but hearing them over and over and then while reading the scout handbook, I said, I want to become that person whom no matter what has been dealt to me, no matter how many people call me the dump pile baby, the worthless trash pile baby, the one that also used to eat at me was one that would call me the parasite. Mm -hmm. So then through scouting, I began learning that I can choose for myself to no longer be a parasite. I can mm -hmm. choose for myself who I want to be and how I want my life to be lived. 
And so that changed my own meaning on my life. I began studying harder in school where I graduated as the valedictorian of my high yeah, school. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And after those experiences, I decided there was one more mission I needed to go on to be truly, truly self-reliant and really free emotionally, mentally and psychologically. Mm -hmm. I decided I needed to finally look for my biological parents when I was 21 years old. I'd never seen them, never met them before. Mm -hmm. I decided to look for them and forgive them. And that was a mixture of emotions, Mary, while on that journey. I first was able to find my father mm -hmm. because he had been a veteran radio broadcaster in my country. Uh -huh. So almost everyone knew him. He was at the time the senior editor and manager for a radio station in Liberia called Star Radio. And mm -hmm. this was started by uh, former President Jimmy Carter. Oh wow. In Liberia. And it, it was, the station wasn't too far from the, uh, the US Embassy also. Uh -huh. So I asked a lot of questions, finally found him. Um, the security guard wouldn't let me see him. But after a while, she pointed me to, to his office. And now, before I could walk away from her, I said, Oh, sorry, I've, I've never seen him before. Can you please tell me what does he look like? She said, I thought you said you knew him. I was like, I don't really know him, know him. So she said, oh, go in. He's the man sitting behind the computer. Uh -huh. I opened the door, walk in. There are three men sitting behind three computers. Oh, no. Star, star, go in. Amy, mini, money, mo, pick a daddy from this bunch. <laughs> <laughs> One of them flagged me over. I walk over to him, and uh, he then told me his name and I said, okay, you are the guy I'm looking for. So he invited me to his house. When I got there, I was so angry because there were other siblings at his house, younger and older than me. Mm -hmm. So I thought, man, I must have really been the dumb fire baby. That's mm -hmm. why they threw me away. So I was so upset. But I knew my focus on my own freedom uh, must be of a higher priority that then leads me into this forgiveness. So long story short, I told him for years, I want to be a child soldier to find him and kill him, but I have come to forgive him. A month later, he helped me find my mother's office. Wow. I was on the way to her office and actually walked past her, so I didn't know who she was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So when, I, when she finally came back to the office, she invited me to her house. I went there the next day, and I was actually more angry at her. Because my whole life, I miss mother more than father, because I've always created father figures. Sure. But then I, long story short with her, I told her I forgive her. And then shortly after that, I traveled to the U.S. to go to college, yeah. Yeah, so forgiveness is a really powerful, powerful yes. thing to do, isn't it? It is very liberating. It is what I call an intentional act of the will. Uh -huh. If I was waiting around to feel like it, I don't I seriously doubt I would have ever done it. Mm -hmm. But my obsession with my own freedom to live my life fully, completely, and to acquire all that I used to dream of becoming, I knew I had to first be free. Mm -hmm. If I did not then do the forgiveness, then they had twice defeated me. Right. So then I decided I needed to do the forgiveness, not for them, but for, for me, you. yes, mm -hmm. yes. And so by doing that, uh, the rest we say is history. <laughs> and I put yeah. most of that in the book there. In the book, <laughs> yes, so yes. Yes. for the full story. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, one of the motivations behind writing the book, everywhere I travel to speak, sometimes I honestly was more interested in others' story than telling mine. Mm -hmm. But they always wanted to know mine. So I thought, well, write the book, put it all in there, and then you can enjoy talking about everything else that your life is really about, right. and then they can read the story. <laughs> there you go. So now you have the Global Empowerment Institute. Yes. And what is that? Global Empowerment Institute is my, what I want to call, soul child that really expresses the purpose and mission of my life to empower individuals, men, women and children globally of all nationality, ethnicity, mm -hmm. backgrounds and what have you. Because there is just human being. Mm -hmm. And inside of each human being, 
you and I included and everyone listening, we have within us this power, this light, this essence that gleams brighter than the experiences of our darknesses that we've experienced. Mm -hmm. I had to tap into that. And then I realized I'm no brighter, no better, no smarter than any human being. That means if I have it in me, every human being has it. Mm -hmm. So then this became my obsession to reach into everybody. And uh -huh. that's why I took on uh, Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is okay. a form of applied psychology, mm -hmm. uh, and then my own life experiences, and who read hundreds of books, attended several seminars in America, from New York to Detroit to Fort Lauderdale to North Carolina, everywhere, okay. soaking up as much knowledge as I can, practical tools to then help individuals from all different positions and angles to reach within and empower themselves. Mm -hmm. And so this is what Global Empowerment Institute is really about. Yes. So if there are people listening out there who mm -hmm. are dealing with their own traumas, mm -hmm. and we talked about this earlier, that you know, even people who have PTSD obviously yes. have had yes. traumas, but yes. all of us have had Certainly some yes. level of trauma throughout mm -hmm. our lives, right? Yes. Yes. So are there some tips? I mean, obviously they go to you for they're going to get a lot more. Absolutely. But are there some tips that people can use right now to start working on themselves, to start empowering themselves rather than living in the memory of those dark events? Yes, yes. There are some tips, and let me share a few of them very fast. One, inside of you listening, everyone have gone through trauma. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what the pain has been, stop for a minute and realize your experiences to yourself, they are real. Mm -hmm. Do not compare them to anyone else and then talk yours down. In fact, do not even listen to my story and go, my God, with what he went through, I have nothing to complain about. Don't do that. Because right. <laughs> your experience to yourself is real. Now when you give acceptance to that and say, yes, my story or my experience is real and I matter, then next thing, choose what do I really want? What do I want my life to be about? What is it? How would I want to wake up every day and feel? Mm -hmm. That's the next thing. And usually I would say don't go into a heady thing about it. Make it a fantasy, like a daydreaming experience. Just relax. Be a child again. And many times we have children doing that around Christmas, which is coming soon. And they fantasize about what Santa Claus is going to bring. Nice. <laughs> so create your own personal Santa Claus. What do you want your life to be about? Mm -hmm. And then next thing, ask yourself, what do I need to let go of? Mm -hmm. This is where it gets real, even more real, because now you're going to be facing a lot of what you've been holding on to. Right. But if you have a closed fist and you're holding on to something, it's hard to have new things put in your hands until you open your hands and let go. So then, that is the brave step. And that's where I come in to help, and that's where Dr. Carpel comes in, and that's where all the materials I can help let go. From that now, the next step is create a five-part vision in your life. Okay. Beginning with number five, in your professional life, career, business, mm -hmm. what do you want in the next six months? In the next 12 months, in the next 18 months, don't make it forever. Make it as immediate. What do you want to see yourself living at? Mm -hmm. Is it more income you want? Is it more clients you want? Is it more business success? Is it more outreach you want? What is it do you, you want in your life in the professional area? Write that down. Make it a bullet point and then write it in a paragraph statement, putting everything in the present time, present, present time. So you can say, I mean, it's a present tense. So that you can say, for example, I want to have 25 new clients in my life. Write it as, I have. Oh, that you already have. Yeah, yes, You're that already you already there. have that, mm -hmm. exactly. Now, then number four, in your social life, what do you want? Mm -hmm. That is relationships. Mm -hmm. All of them, from romantic, intimate relationships, to family relationships, colleagues, business, business partners, or just friends. What kind of quality of relationship do you want to experience? Mm -hmm. First and foremost, with yourself. Mm -hmm. 
very important. Yes, with yourself. Are Most you, people forget mm -hmm. that one. Yes, mm -hmm. very, very true. And without, sometimes I say if you neglect yourself, without loving yourself, and now you go looking for love from others, you become like two beggars in the street with empty plates, promising each other something they don't have. <laughs> so, Roland, yes, yes. we are out of time. I can't believe mm. there's so much to talk about. But before we go off the air, yes. how can people contact you, learn more about you, buy your book, get your coaching, mm. all of that? Thank what are you. your website? So, my website, number one to get in touch with me, is geicoaching.com. GEI is Global Empowerment Institute. Coaching, as in life coaching, right. so geicoaching.com, and then also rollandchemokai.com. So on GEI, they can find more information on my coaching programs and what I do. And to directly reach me, I can be reached at info at rollandchemokai.com. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great. And I'm going to post that on my website about this show so people can click on it if they didn't Wonderful. catch it. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming this evening. Thank this has been you. great, Thank and you. I would love to have you back on another time. I love, love to come back again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you Thanks. so much.